Hey folks, Armin Hammer here, and you are about to enjoy a brand new episode of the SAN Podcast. But before we get into it, remember this episode is brought to you by O2 Recovery, which is a delicious recovery drink that's kind of like a healthier version of sports drinks. And it comes in a bunch of different flavors. They're all amazing. Some of them are caffeinated, some of them are not caffeinated, so you have an option whether you want to get a little bit of a pick-me-up or if you just want that delicious fresh recovery in your system. You can go to drinko2.com, use the code ARMEN, A-R-M-E-N, you get 15% off and free shipping. You support the show, you support them. It's good stuff all around. Now in this episode of the Sand Podcast, we talked about a whole wide range of stuff from Krennikov competing in Dubai to AI and the weirdness that is modern technology. And we also decided what the newest Sand Movie Night homework is gonna be. That's gonna be Clint Eastwood's Unforgiven. So, hope you guys enjoy the show, and we'll see you guys next time. Welcome to this very spooky episode. Ooh. It is kind of spooky. I feel like we've been here before, saying yeah. these words, we almost, starting this same podcast. Uh, almost, almost, almost something like deja vu a little bit. Yeah. Uh, welcome to this episode of Seductively Applied Noogies. Noogies? Nuggies? Yeah, it's, it's spelled <laughs> Nuggies, but it's I think it's supposed to be funny. Nuggies. <laughs> It's uh, it's less funny the second time. Yeah, I think I think it's not as funny after we fuck it up and have to redo this whole thing. So yeah, yeah, yeah. just I pretend talking about. those of you who are listening to this and haven't heard the first mm-hmm. time, pretend like you heard us do it yes. before, but better, and now yes. are redoing it because of technical difficulties. Yes. We had a technical difficulty. Ra- uh, Chase uh, used a uh, Rachel epithet for um, uh, Asians, as and is, as, as, is, as is tradition, as is That's tradition, right. and we, mm-hmm. we right just finally that. we just couldn't. We, yes. This is like the first time that we've really tried to like restart the show usually i just edit out all of chase's racial yes. slurs yes those damn there it Don't. is come on <laughs> let's not even <laughs> walk again. down that path i had to i had to bleep that one out again come on <laughs> i don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with the word uh, let's talk on the about joke. that title though i do enjoy that title seductively applied noogies just yeah. mm-hmm. because there's got to be some people for which that's a real mm-hmm. thing, because with all the uh, noogies given mm-hmm. by bullies to kids in their formative years, there's got to be some kids who have some noogie fetishes yes. now, yeah. who that, just cannot get off unless they have knuckles wrapping them on the top of the skull. That yeah. comes from uh, that comes from a big fan of of the Wadcast and a big fan of of San mm-hmm. Gordon Wagner. Oh hell uh, yeah! Just a super fan. Top five listener. Top five uh, listener of, of every podcast. <laughs> just huge fan. So you know what, Gordon? We're big fans of yours. Big fans as well. And Thanks, if that's bro. your kink, we'll keep it between us yeah, and, and everybody that listens to the You know show. what? I feel like if that's not a sexual thing, that's definitely an ASMR thing. Yeah. Like this sound. There's Ooh. no way that mic is getting that. Ooh. No, you're, you're right. Yeah. There's no way. I'm, I'm hearing it in my head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's 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 I'm making like, it to the headphones, but only through your head meat. <laughs> through my through my brain meat <laughs> is the only way that it's making it through. Uh, yeah, so um, I, I'm not 100 percent sure uh-huh. I, why I read it as nuggies yeah, first yeah. because I think I was just thinking. Um, nuggies. Oh, oh, you good. were thinking of some dank nugs. Dank <laughs> nugs. Uh, yeah, I I was just in Denver uh-huh. uh, earlier this week. The actually. city of dank nugs. The city dank of nug dank nugs. capital. Did you know? <laughs> that marijuana is legal in the state of <laughs> Colorado. I did. No shit. Oh, I did. That was that was an ex- that was an experience and a half. Yeah. Did you know that you could just walk into stores that sell marijuana products? Y- you betcha. Indeed, I do. I also know that it's if you get up early in the morning and start your drive from Austin at seven thirty, you can get there to over the border to Colorado in twelve hours and still have a fun evening. Now, kids, what you're going to want to do is. Um, <laughs> The city of Trinidad, Colorado, is immediately on the other side of the border. That's going to be your best point of access to marijuana. So you, you're going to—it's about 13 hours from Texas or from wherever you are. It from Austin, di- Texas. If it could be differing amounts of hours. You're going to want to get to Trinidad. There's many nice hotels I there. Think you can stay other there. There's other places they can go. No, I, no, no. For your one drive, mm-hmm. yeah. If you're going to start out at seven in the morning, Trinidad is the place to go. There's like five dispensaries and many hotels. Yeah. So that's how you want to plan your. Uh, overnight trip to yes. Colorado. And then you can just load up your car with marijuana and then bring it all back to Texas. A round trip uh, to Austin is going to be 26 hours. Uh, mileage obviously varies. Um, but um, but yeah, and then once you get here, you can actually sell it at a lot higher value <laughs> than what you bought it for there. Because, and that's like, again, if you want to avoid having a job or stuff like that. I mean, it's just, just putting that out there. Hypothetically. 
Correct. Yes. Everything yeah. that you said is is one hundred percent correct. Yes. Um, but also one hundred percent not endorsed as by an official officially sans endorsed <laughs> sans by the San podcast. It is not an official sans. The Instagram of Chase Five Hundred Four does not stand behind those statements. Yes. But Cellucor's does. Yes. No, nope, that's, right? not, that's not true endorsed. either. <laughs> that's not right? true either. Like Cellucor. You, both of these are. You are the <laughs> voice of Cellucor. <laughs> Is that correct? Uh, are we are we on the same page here? All right. Yeah, um, about creatine and beta alanine. Yeah. Noise. Or alanine? Is that a type of weed? I don't know. It's like it I'm, is. I'm high on life, and by life I mean beta alanine, <laughs> creatine, <laughs> and caffeine. I am itchy twenty four fucking seven. Uh, uh, yes. You know, in Austin Chlamydia. right now, there is a boil, a water boil alert. Uh, yes. So we're supposed to boil all of our water. All of our we're water is full of poop right now. Uh, we yeah, need it's an gross. Alex Jones yeah. feature. Just drinking canned to beverages this and bullshit stuff. conspiracy. Well, here's the fun part is that this is entirely like a cover your ass kind of a warning. Because apparently like, uh, apparently no nowhere in Austin has any water actually failed any contamination tests. The water you're drinking is not contaminated. And yet, because uh, all of the flooding and rainwater we've been having lately, I guess, overwhelmed the filtration system, they've put out this ridiculous warning saying that the water is contaminated. Now, everyone's boiling their water and drinking, which uh, is which you can avoid personally by just ignoring it and drinking tap water. <laughs> but, uh, but unfortunately on a larger scale where it actually becomes a problem is like restaurants are having to operate and coffee shops, which, which affects me are going to having to operate with limited menus because they can't serve the water unless they boil it. And it's a whole kerfuffle. Sure Don't enough. believe anything anyone tells you ever. It's all lies. I had to act like a weird, <laughs> a weird deviant earlier today yeah. at the coffee shop. I go, to my drinking normal, water out yeah, of the normal, bathroom yeah, well yeah no yes. my normal mo well, actually no, oh that's an excellent idea lapping I it out of the that. toilet <laughs> lapping it out of the toilet no i actually just brought a cooler full of bottles of water uh-huh. and just ran out to my car chugged a bottle of water and kept walking back in about 25 times because yep. uh, that's the only way i can make it through my four hours at the coffee shop but yeah i'd say there's no one i've not seen a, a rash of you know zombies walking around nothing with discolored skin and or anything like six that. months from now yeah that's massive right. diarrhea <laughs> six months from now that's how long it takes delayed uh, i've seen some, i've read about stuff. this it's like swallowing gum it takes seven years to go through your system and swallowing shitty water takes six months to go through your system exactly the reason why i brought that up is because you guys are talking about beta alanine Mm. And today, with my lunch, I was like, I want something I mountain. I want <laughs> something flavored. I snorted two rails of beta alanine. I want something flavored, but I want something caffeinated. I want uh. something carbonated. And I just happened to have a can of C4 <laughs> on the go in the fridge, which was delicious. Mm. And my face exploded in itchiness. <laughs> in a, yeah. Like you know, you know when you get. Um, those of you who take pre-workout regularly do not experience this anymore, you broken human beings. Mm-hmm. But those of us who do not take pre-workout on a regular basis, uh, it I imagine is what the reason why so many meth addicts have like scratches on their bodies because mm-hmm. they just have to like tear their skin off. And I, I found myself with like the coarsest towels that we have just rubbing my own face <laughs> raw as hard as I could because it, I was itchy. And then maybe... 15 seconds of this which felt so good by mm-hmm. the way I, I, I like stopped and i was like you're a fucking moron you did this to yourself like yeah. there's nothing wrong with you you're not scratching any actual itch nope. this is a positive side effect an intended positive side effect <laughs> of a beverage you literally just consumed is it an intended positive side effect i mean i know they put it in there so that people that they even though there's non-itch versions of beta alanine like and i don't know maybe we should direct this question at chase is it is the itch does it have any positive benefits does it does it does it do anything i don't know i don't know yeah i mean some people like know it's working how you know it's working it's like soap bubbles to return to a, a real a sand classic conversation that's what we're all doing we're really we're in that we're, we've hit that phase of the podcast where we're really it, no original content a lot like hollywood we're just doing reboots Recycling. and remakes of old conversations that we've had. Well, that's why it itches. What? It's so that you know it works. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Because other than that, w- my understanding was when they first put in the non-itch versions, mm-hmm. people were like, I don't think this is working, man. I yeah, can't yeah, deal yeah. with this. Yeah, exactly. And uh, for those of you who, who want to try uh, beta alanine in a really effective way, I've noticed when you take it on a daily basis, you know, you don't just like sort of chug it. 10 seconds before you go into a workout. But if you take it in the morning and the evening, um, 
uh, and you kind of dose up with it, then it really does cut down on lactic burn significantly. Mm-hmm. It's like the only supplement I can say actually does work. So, yeah, yeah for reals. Yep. Chase, do you concur? I, I can concur. Chase concurs. Uh, you guys are Blonix sponsored athletes. We are Blonix sponsored yeah. athletes. That's mm-hmm. correct. So that's that's usually that where they you're gave getting us, your. They they, they bought me. my loyalty for life by giving me one free thing once, which is pretty much how it works. Mm-hmm. That's about very. That, that sounds about right. And yeah. also beat elite athletes oh. as well. Fuck I've never yeah. tried beat. You all guys have all what? tried beat elite. I've never had beat I elite. I got the before. beat elite. I tried one package of it. Uh, I still have those packages. No. I ought to use it more. I heard it helps you for breathe endurance. good. Yeah, what's that? It's good for endurance, which yes, is you know, your sport of choice. So Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. I, really, if any, I'm, a, I'm an animal for cardio. It's just constant, like rowing that's, and biking and running. That's tattoo on his back says. That's right. Cardio animal. Lower I'm back. A, I'm a triathlete Tramp in the stamp, making. It's odd choice. Cardio, hardio, bro. That's good for it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you just strip down. He's like, let me show you guys. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so um, after, I, after I dealt with my meth like what i assume to be meth like symptoms from all the caffeine mm-hmm. um i don't know if you guys you guys have seen this i don't think chase watched it i don't know if everybody watching or listening watched it but i uh i found out that robert zemeckis definitely fucking knew about 9-11 <laughs> <laughs> oh! I'll tell you that right now uh, yeah. you watched that video that that's a 100 percent fucking f- f- <laughs> fact so if you missed last week we, we went into depth breaking down the fact that there was an, a, a pretty amazing conspiracy video on youtube that that God, that, that you were po- underselling it. that posits <laughs> that robert zemeckis uh, 30 years ago knew uh, I guess 40 years ago at this point knew about 9-11 and he warned us by putting coded messages into the Back to the Future films and you will watch it start laughing at it and about halfway through the video a moment will come when Armin do you want to fill us in on just no, like no please like, I don't even want to uh, there was a moment I literally <laughs> could not I was like I start. I started laughing halfway through the video and then and then there was a time where I just couldn't no, I was just like dead. There was just a dead face. Just, just like, I told you. That's I exactly can't. what I said. There's a moment where you're going to lean in. You're going to say, holy shit. Armin, Robert Zemeckis have, knew about 9-11. This is a missed opportunity if you did not film yourself reacting to I, Robert Zemeckis I did 9/11. not. That is a waste I of did, opportunity. I didn't did. think it was going to get me this bad. <laughs> I didn't think it was going to happen. I got, I got fucking... I got got by that yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. And then the last third of the entire video is like... It's just this crazy, like, fever dream yep. of, of, like, the zeitgeist of humanity. Uh-huh. And I was like, I was just, I was enraptured uh-huh. by that point. Oh, I was now so I, fucking now locked I, in. Now I know what I need to rewatch after my next trip to Colorado. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> I also love how the first, the first, like, two minutes of the video is literally him just, the, repeat, the narrator repeating uh, tw- two pines. Twin towers, twin two towers, pines. two yes. pines, yes. pines, towers, towers, pines. The pines are the towers. Yes. The towers are the pines. Yes, he, he definitely follows that principle of like repetition to try and get concepts stuck in your head. Two pines, two towers. The two towers are the two pines. And then he just puts it in your head so that later on you don't even notice when he makes huge leaps. In the background is a pine tree, and we know pines are towers. And you're, you're like, like I <laughs> guess. I mean, what, I mean it's a like, kind as, of a leap. But. As the camera pulls out, there's a giant flaming 9-11 and I was like pause where's the where's 9-11, the 9/11? And then it just he, looks like like oh those are that's the 11 where uh-huh. the tires are and then you like kind of like have to you know like fuzzy your eyesight like yeah. you're looking at a 3d puzzle yeah. and then you see the 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 sign for the mechanics shop is a nine it uh-huh. has like a curly arrow on it and I was like yeah Sure, I okay. guess. Okay, I guess like that's really the hint. I- yeah, I mean, I guess we can spoil it. We can spoil it for everyone. It, he in that the the moment that comes in the video because I know a lot of our audience isn't going to waste their time watching this, but I strongly recommend it. Uh, I believe I'm trying. It's been a while for me, so you can confirm whether or not this is this is right. But I believe the moment where it really starts to like lock in in a weird way is when. Uh, they begin to connect the themes and the images in Back to the Future and these predictions of 9-11, which, they've, again, he's, he's established all these themes and symbols and blah, blah, blah. And you're like, he is just talking out of his ass. He's a ridiculous guy. He can, begins to connect them to the Robert Zemeckis-directed <laughs> film in 2010 or 11. Yeah. Uh, uh, it was the 2015. Walk. Oh, 2015. I'm sorry. Yes, that's right. It was 30 years it later. It was 30 years later. October 2015. 2015. So on October 20, uh, 2015, the, which is the date that uh, that uh, that that Marty McFly travels to in Back to the Future Two. 
Robert Zemeckis releases The Walk. Yeah, yeah. It was called The Walk, the, the Joseph Gordon-Levitt film. It was the, the feature film, or sorry, the narrative film adaptation of Man on Wire, uh, which is the story of the French artist who walks the tightrope between the two towers. He released that film on the time when Marty came. And then within, within The Walk... There's literally a couple moments in there where, hello, there are moments in there where the character played by Joseph Gordon-Levitt is costumed in the same clothing, the the, the, the leather jacket and the red t-shirt and that, that Marty was the McFly moment. is wearing. Yes, that's the moment that Marty McFly is wearing in the Back to the Future films. And like that's the moment where you stop laughing and you just sort of lean in. And you're like... Holy fucking shit. And you realize <laughs> now, now in classic, by the way, in just sort of classic sort of magician or misdirection or mentalist sort of ways, what this actually means is that that's the weird coincidence from which all other aspects of the thing were reverse engineered. So at some point he's like, oh yeah, I guess that, uh, look, that's the same clothes that uh, that Marty McFly was wearing. Or, oh, I guess this came out at the same time as the, uh, the, the Back to the Future thing. At some point, that's where it started. And then all these other <laughs> arbit- completely arbitrary constructions were kind of, uh, uh, were elaborated from that one connection. But in the same way you would lead someone into believing something else, they start far afield with these other things so that when you eventually make it to re- around to that one actual connection, it feels like it validates everything that came before it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that, and so it's like when you kind of take a step, but still it takes you off guard because you're watching this entertaining, like, is this guy a fucking serious video? And then when that hits, when that lands, it's really good. And then it just goes, and I'm still not 100% sure it's not just a, uh, a total troll the entire video because it then just launches into it the cosmic so fucking crazy it goes that cosmic last... after that I it, it. it goes cosmic in the literal sense a goddamn that. time yeah. traveling demon yeah, so i i yeah. looked for it but i couldn't find it it's hard day. to find oh, yeah. we'll yeah. find the yeah because because it's it's <laughs> there's a lot of different videos that popped up after it oh. and it's not even the top search if you if you oh, look for gotcha. huh. so, so not unlike flat earth what perhaps started as a troll there's probably now a thousand videos created by people who actually believe the Zemeckis right uh, all I'm saying uh, is look into, it. Yeah, yeah. Now, look into it yeah, look into it now I have a new obsession yeah, the new yeah. obsession is yeah finding what is a good conspiracy theory we can make up the that we can make water. seem plausible <laughs> yeah. the water but that's so local it's so Austin we need something that's big Flint we need something uh, that connects a lot of pieces well my father was born in Global Detroit warming. Michigan <laughs> Where Flint is, and I now live in Austin, Texas. Austin, Texas. Flint, Michigan. Water, water. This is how the video I sounds, see it. by Shit. the way. I see the connection. You see the you're connection? Making. You see what's happening now? I see the connection you're making. I, uh, you know, I just... Come on, Rob. You couldn't have told us in a more clear way. I mean, I guess it's pretty mm-hmm. fucking clear in Back to the Future. Yeah. You gotta save the yeah, clock I mean. tower. Mm-hmm. You gotta save the clock save tower. Save the clock tower. Save the the tower <laughs> now i just want to watch that <laughs> video like 10 times in a row uh for those of you who are listening um uh-huh. i just wanted to say welcome to our show about crossfit i guess yeah. uh, we touched <laughs> thoroughly on beta alanine before the this. wheat thins yeah. save the wheat thins yes. i'm just gonna say shit like that yeah. and then you can tie it back later we'll figure God, it yeah, all leave out. it up to someone else we'll find a way to make it work uh yeah so to to try and to try and just circle into at least a modicum of fitness talk mm-hmm. we talked about beta alanine that counts that do, counts do you have yeah. something to say chase did i had you guys a... did you guys see the post that jacob hepner shared no this is great uh so chase I've sent seen me this corgi. post while he's while he's was it about his up. corgi someone um someone edited and photoshopped a uh, a picture of jacob hepner versus matt fraser we'll repost it on nice. the sand podcast instagram uh a picture of jacob hepner versus matt fraser in the in the form of Khabib versus oh, Connor. That's cool. And like that. it that's is funny. uh it is very nice. well done. Very well like done. It. It, except Camera. um shout out to Quinn O'Connell who made it. Yeah. Apparently. Yeah. 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 Uh good job, Quinn. And just to let you know, uh, everyone uh, Armin will edit in a picture, that picture into the video later on when he takes right time here. and care to there you go. There it is. There it was right go. there. Nice job. Thanks. Thanks. I did a good job there. Yeah. I felt uh, like uh, you know, Bill and Ted's bogus journey. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, right. And uh, the by the Russells will go back and change. That. Yeah, I mean, really, we could do any like. And again, like, and the other, the funny thing is, like, for no reason at all, he's editing a picture of lasagna right here. 
I did, Doesn't that look delicious? Job. You guys, it I really did a does. Great like job. now, I want lasagna. What you guys don't understand is, uh, I have been subliminally um, getting people mm-hmm. to buy into my lasagna is paleo <laughs> uh, by just flashing the words lasagna and then a picture of lasagna and mm-hmm. is and a picture of lasagna yes. and paleo and a picture yes. of Rob Wolf. Just it's like two frames at a time. Mm-hmm. Of Mark Bell. Yeah. So <laughs> um, lasagna is paleo, folks. You know, we never really talked about it. On the, did we talk about um, Mark Bell doing his bodybuilding contest ever on the podcast? Oh, yeah. I don't think we did. The only guest who has ever appeared That's right. on this podcast, now, Mark Bell. That is so fun fact for fun everybody fact. watching this right now. Correct. Uh-huh. Mark Bell is the only guest to ever appear on this podcast. Mm-hmm. But back when the Sand Podcast was the Scale is Needed web show, yes, our very first guest was the very first true. CrossFit Games champion, James Fitzgerald. That's right. OPT came in mm-hmm. and we did a whole skit about how I forgot that he that had he won, won the CrossFit Games yep. and he was pissed about it. It was great. He was a good sport about it. Was it. A, he was a good sport about it. It yes. was great. So uh, there is your your trivia yes. for when, you know, I guess uh, in that trivia app, you're going to win like a million dollars if you answer the correct question. Mm-hmm. Who's the fr- who's the first guest <laughs> the on SAN? Yeah. CrossFit SAN. The answer is James Podcast. Fitzgerald, mm-hmm. OPT. Uh, but yeah, Mark Bell, he got super fucking jacked. Yes, well, I mean, he was always jacked, but he got super shredded. He got he super got. fucking shredded. Yeah, yeah, and Keto we were, as fuck. Yes, he got deeply, deeply. I was. It was that conversation with Mark Bell that inspired me to kind of really tackle the keto diet, and that's when I lost like a bunch or the most weight I've lost to, certainly in recent times was was that, and I've managed to to keep it off. Um, and then he went deeper and deeper into ketosis uh, and other things. And he came and, out the other side. <laughs> and he came out the other side. So he did a bodybuilding contest, and uh, he just shredded for the body Yeah, dying for the bodybuilding contest was not keto, though, he talked about. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah uh, he actually had Hani Rambod, who's, uh, watch him, who's that, Phil Heath's coach. Uh, coaching his way <laughs> to that contest there, so that was uh, thank you thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, <laughs> hot. Yeah, I don't think I don't think steroids are are, are keto. keto. I think there's some fun. carbs. I think there's yes. some carbs in in yes. steroids. Mm-hmm. Um, there's Actually, probably no, I think, some carbs in there. I think steroids there. are keto. There's oil. They're there's oil dissolved based. in oil. So. But you can get, oh shit, you're you right. Can get steroids with uh, steroids in uh, MCT oil. MCT oil steroids. That's yes. like the Put it in your coffee. Yes. Oh, well, what if yeah. what, that's that would be I the ultimate be diet? What one. if you do keto, like a 70-30 keto, where 70 percent of your caloric intake comes from steroids? That's great. <laughs> that is fantastic. Perfect. You I just have to do a lot out. of steroids. I don't think that pans out. Yeah, well. I think it works. Again, we are just never ever going to make it back onto CrossFit's no Facebook or Instagram page. Thank God. Thank that was God. A lot of pressure. Oh. That was a whole lot of pressure, guys. Um, yeah. yeah. So. Speaking of people getting way too fucking shredded for their own goddamn good, mm-hmm. have you guys got? seen Eddie Hall recently? Yes. Yeah, dude. What the uh, fuck? Yeah. Fairly recently. I've I mean, seen the, so I've seen his he, most recent ab picture. He got put even a picture more? side oh, yeah. by side yeah. of yeah. him after he deadlifted 500 kilos, looking like a goddamn uh, bear pig. like a cranberry <laughs> that's about to explode. Mm-hmm. Man bear yeah. pig. That's good. Holy crap! And, yeah. and then the new picture next to it is uh, he has a fucking eight pack because of the mm-hmm. lighting. Let's be honest. Um, but he also Armin looks like he's lost in here. Bingo. He's yeah. lost a lot of what you're adding a lot of work to me. Yes. My day tomorrow. He said he's 164 kg there. Do math for me. So what is 164 the, the kg? Before he was, he was 200, he was 430 pounds before. And mm. now 430 pounds. Holy shit. 164 kilos is like 360 pounds. Nice. Ish. A spelt 360. Yeah. Yeah. So he's lost almost a hundred pounds. Mm. He's lost like 70 pounds. And he nice. looks j- 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 hacked. Yeah. Yep, 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 yeah. Yep, yep. Um, I'm not sure what he's trying to do. Have we figured it out? Is he trying to get into bodybuilding? I have no idea. He's probably just trying to to be about that that more healthful lifestyle now that he's what? done popping him pop put pushing eggplant emojis, dog. Getting all of his calories from cheesecake and steroids. Before. Big dick energy. Yeah. BDE. Well, mm-hmm. either way, um, man, this is he. I, I never really realized because you know he's obviously gigantic. Mm. I, you never really realize how gigantic he is. He just looked like a normal strong man mm-hmm. when you look at him uh, back when he was deadlifting 1,100 pounds. Mm-hmm. But now, holy shit, man. Like, you look back at there, and he looks like a goddamn bowling ball with tattoos. 
this is an effective strategy, I think. Just just eat, just spend several years eating nothing but cheesecake and doing steroids, and th- to build up a, a base of strength of and muscle. Bulking and season. then you can just cut all that fat out of there and just be uh, a big, strong beast <laughs> with super shredded abs. He's a fucking giant. Yeah, yeah. He's un- he's not that tall. Mm. He's not like six nine like the fucking mountain is. You know what I mean? He's still way bigger. But than even us. the mountain, it strangely enough, was like competing with like a six pack. Yeah, and he won the, the world. Got married. He did get married. Yeah. He got married to a tiny gerbil of a human being. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't... Now, can we just... Mm-hmm. Who is now split up to her navel. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not to be vulgar about it, but what the fuck? How does that even work? What the... <laughs> holy shit James. i like making content that's only for the people that watch uh, the video yeah that's yeah, right yeah, holy crap uh, uh yeah that's i don't i don't know how that works but mm-hmm. it works yeah <laughs> yeah it, it works if you work it i guess so either yeah. way um the mountain got married eddie hall's getting shredded yeah, I don't know what's going on. I'm still out here. I'm not a strong man. Brian, Sorry. I'm, just, I'm just trying to picture the. I'm just trying to picture the various sex acts between. Them. I imagine. <laughs> I imagine it's like half the horse standing, st- just standing still, and her doing like pull ups on his dick or something like that. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's like that. That would be an interesting kind uh-huh. of hand job. Yeah. yeah. Or he's, you know, like like have you ever hung like a wet towel over your boner and carried it around? He just walks around the house with her. <laughs> Yeah. He hangs a wet version of his wife over just, his boner. Just, over, yeah. just like laying That's over right. it. That's right. Yeah. Let's um well, something for everyone in this episode. That's yeah. right. That's right. Fitness, you guys. Hmm. Uh so uh you guys just don't care about the Hepner verse first competition. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's fine. I know they're gonna both be at Dubai, uh and with Krenikov. Yes, with Krenikov. With other fit people. Yes. Dude, mm-hmm. Krenikov is definitely gonna get a visa to go to the UAE. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's, he's going to go head to head. He's going to be easy to travel between bad guy countries. He was right. He (laughs) won the fucking, uh, uh, he won the qualifier. Not that, you know, he won the qualifier. I think so. Yeah. He got, he got the, um, oh yeah. It was him and Horvath. It was him and Horvath that won the qualifier. Well, to be fair, Matt Fraser didn't have to do it. That's right. Um, but he beat a bunch of really fit motherfuckers in the yeah, meantime. Like like he beat Jacob Hepner. He yep. beat um, Trevor Mayer. Yeah. You know, he's, he's what were the nature of the workouts? I never looked at any of them because gross. I don't care. But what they were, were they? pretty gross. Like were one of them like, was like were they this, like just like a lot of engine related stuff, like the open. It was or? a good mix. Okay. It was a good mix. One of them, um, I think, one of the last ones had was like a twenty minute AMRAP of like climbing ladder of like rowing calories and double kettlebell snatch, mm-hmm. which looked fucking miserable. Mm-hmm. Um, there was another one that was like kind of this combination of like double unders and thrusters. Mm. Um, and there was another one that was like chest of our pull-ups and something or another. So can we say that base, assuming that all of his scores on those qualification workouts are, are legitimate. Can we say that he is, that he is legit, that he is a legit threat Krenikov? based on that? Yeah. yeah. I'd say Krenikov is legit. I, yeah. I, th- I still think is a real shame that we didn't see him compete mm. last year. But whatever, that's fine. It's in mm-hmm. the past. Now that the CrossFit Games have moved into the fucking 21st century, yeah. you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so uh, rest in peace, regionals. Yes. Long live sanctionals. It's a, it's a, it's, re- it's a real shame we're never going to see Krenikov compete at regionals 2019. Right. That's <laughs> it's right. never going to happen. He, well, we're going to have to settle for the consolation prize of seeing him compete at the CrossFit Games. Yeah. You know? If he can get a visa this year. Yeah. Um, I just I wish that CrossFit would just leave my games alone and not ruin them, you know. Leave my games alone. That's right. Uh yeah, you know, it's just you you cannot count out a guy who shows up his rookie year at regionals and fucking just smashes everybody's face in. Mm-hmm. Like no matter what the the context of it is, you know, coming from a classic drug ridden athletics country. I can't recall. He, he didn't go to regionals 2018. He just no. did the open in 2018 didn't. in the oh. open. He was like garbage. What? No, last year, no, sorry, last 2017, 2017, in the open, he was garbage. Did he, did he make it to regionals? No, last no. Year? Okay. He, so it was regionals. He couldn't make yeah. it to because of these no, issues. No, 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 no. He, in, he won regionals. He oh, okay. won That's regionals right. in 2018. Yeah. He couldn't, was, my brain has already deleted all yeah, of that. He couldn't make it to regionals in 2017. That's his right. rookie year at yeah. regionals was his second year in the open. He made it to regionals and yep. then he won. 
Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And uh, he's young and he's in really good shape. He mm-hmm. stayed in really good shape. He's ugly as fuck. Um, he <laughs> on a personal note. <laughs> Dude, scary You know people shit. listen to that's this show? That's, uh, that's who you want as a, as a super villain of CrossFit. Yeah. Well, he, he looks slightly de-evolved. He looks somewhat like a caveman. That's he has, the, he has, has a that's the thing. He's actually the he's next them, step. Them caveman And he's jeans. lost. Like, no, he's I like, think, I don't I think, need to look good. I conquer everything. No, no. I, th- I think he is uh, still part of the previous uh, species of humans there. <laughs> so I think there were the Neanderthals in Western Europe, and there's the Den of Denovisians in like Siberia and stuff. So you I think, think he's, he's like that? half of that. Yeah. That's fucking sick. Uh-huh. Denovisian. Denovisians. And I'm not saying he's ugly as like a negative. I'm just saying it's a character trait. Yeah. Yeah, he's it's not like a real human being. He has a chip on his shoulder. Maybe. I don't know. But uh, it is interesting. He's really fucking fit. Yeah, I'll yeah. tell you that. But Regardless is, of all that stuff. It's interesting to note that, you know, Krennikov is showing up, hopefully. Uh, Hepner's showing up. Frazier's showing up. And there's a, a spot to the CrossFit Games on the line uh, in Dubai this year. It's almost as if now there's a reason to care a lot more about some of these events yeah. than in previous years. No. Which I know is all bullshit because yeah. CrossFit's only interested in making money now, and that's why they canceled Regionals 2019. But it's almost as if the interest in these other events is beginning to increase to the point where it might rival that of your shitty regional competitions that no one was even watching to begin with. Fit Beth's going to be at Dubai as well. Yes. Yes, she is. Fantastic. Yeah, she's going to fucking cr- cr- crush Can it. Can we be her entourage? We, we're all located I in the same city. I can't afford to be an entourage there. Uh, that's a really, really good point. Unless for everything. Well, that's, really that's that I would hope. Well, I, isn't, <laughs> should, I think some, some prince should pay for everything. They got princes over there. I think they do have princes over uh, there. Some prince should pay for us to I don't have know. Nothing offer a prince. Yeah, you know, ever, after after they cloned mm-hmm. Prince and they <laughs> sent the Prince <laughs> army around the world, princes. I think they have multiple princes over there. But he would oh. truly be known as the artist formerly known as Prince. <laughs> Correct. Hey, speak- the official name of this Holy club. Shit. By the way, current events, uh, Chase really dodged a bullet by not going oh. to Saudi Arabia to start that gym. Yeah, 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 our relation, relations are breaking down hard between yeah. this country yeah. and that. What happened there? You I heard there was bone saw on people. Uh, 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 yeah. Not the Kronos fit for I telling guess, me about this. I guess the... Now we're doing now we're doing fucking current events. This podcast does everything yeah uh, so the dun, 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 dun. so there was a uh that's, that's there was break there was a saudi um a citizen who was also a journalist who was also um like mildly critical of the the leadership in saudi arabia like not super super like radically he left, critical, he left saudi he arabia critical. many many years ago he returned to the saudi arabian uh, uh, uh um embassy in turkey we believe he lives in turkey now because he needed to do some paperwork so he could get For married marriage, yeah he walks into the building there's security camera footage of him walking into the building and he never walked out again his wife was waiting for him outside and it has basically well, let me, emerged yeah let me let me give you yeah, some yeah. details around that and then you can tell me what you think may have happened <laughs> the day that he was walking into this this embassy he had actually been to the embassy a few days beforehand and they told him listen we can't do your paperwork you have to come back in a few days Uh he shows up a few days later everybody who usually works at the embassy they take the day off Mm -hmm. and a dozen people who are uh personal bodyguards of the uh uh, uh, the one of the the princes in Saudi off. Arabia who he pissed off had flown in had flown in at like three o'clock in the morning that morning to staff the embassy that day <laughs> and then uh, also had had dozens of boxes of cleaning supplies delivered to the embassy that day you can literally see footage of like a, a little woman pu- pushing a cart full of bottles of bleach into the building and also traveled there with their own personal bone saws that day and then left that night at like 6 p.m one of the people involved mm-hmm. actually wore the man's clothes and an and a fake beard so he looked like the dude out of the embassy as Holy if they could see him shit. leaving and now uh the i believe the saudi consulate building is in turkey is specifically denying the turkish government any uh availability of their well Mm -hmm. in the back of their building and their property because (laughs) i I wonder why the sovereignty or something Uh um or the fact that just pieces of his fucking body are in the bottom of that well also rumor has it that like was it his fingers that were like sent back to did you not hear this no i haven't heard this apparently i I read that his they they sent his fingers back Mm -hmm. to the uh to the saudi prince 
mm. as a trophy. Cool. And then they denied that this ever happened. They were like, we don't know what happened to this guy. This makes no sense. And Turkey was like, this fucking guy's dead. This guy's <laughs> definitely fucking dead, guys. Yeah. I don't want to speak about it anymore. And then <laughs> the, good. The, real, the real sort of like fucked up dunk on the whole thing is that for like two weeks, Saudi Arabia is like, we have no idea what you're talking about. This guy, this guy disappeared. Mm-hmm. That sucks. I wonder what yeah. could have happened to him. And everyone's That's like, in a whole nother country. Everyone's like, he's fucking dead. You, you guys, like, yeah. we can see what's ha- what's happening here. He mm-hmm. definitely fucking died. And then they were like, yeah, it turns out two weeks later, like, yeah, it turns out he did die. A fight broke out, and they had to kill him. <laughs> and we're looking for his body. And yeah. then like a week after that, which is like two days ago, they're mm-hmm. like we kind of had him murdered. Like we kind of tortured (laughs) and executed him, but it was really bad mistake. Like we're super sorry. (laughs) Our bad. You guys are bad. You guys. We're sorry. It's like saying like we didn't see our fuck up was we do this shit all the time in Saudi Arabia. And so we figured it would be cool if we just did it there in Turkey. In Turkey. Uh, We didn't, we didn't realize not our house. Yeah. uh, You guys even, even worse. I honestly don't understand how it's possible. Mm -hmm. Uh, just for the fucking optics of all of it, mm-hmm. the prince who is who's basically being accused of of orchestrating this entire thing set up a photo shoot with the guy's son and mm-hmm. shook his hand <laughs> for wow. a photo to make it look like they're cool. Uh-huh. We're cool. Like, hey, I, I had your dad allegedly had your dad uh-huh. tortured and dismembered uh-huh. and me- murdered. But we're cool, right? So uh-huh. you you have Fuck. every you have every reason to of your own free will shake my hand. Right That's now. right. You have every reason of your son, own free will this, to shake my son hand. Son and all extended relatives living in Saudi Arabia yep. have every reason That's to of their own free man. will be- yep. behave in a cordial manner. Well, it's kind of what we talked we talked about a while back on the podcast about traveling to certain countries over there. It's like, yeah, the fact is, if you just you know flip off the wrong person who is connected, they you have no rights over there. So Dude. have fun by different. countries country but have fun in united arab emirates all you crossfit athletes the thing though is is it's not it's not just countries like saudi arabia saudi arabia has enough you know red flags against it um i understand financially there are probably some boons involved with us dealing lots of weapons to them mm-hmm. that's cool i guess and we get a lot of money well, it's, it's, it's a lot of oil, oil and yeah, stuff yeah. whatever mostly but, the oil um, coming back this way you know that, my but. understanding is that there's a whole lot of uh uh, bad shit that they've been involved against mm-hmm. us and other people that we're cool with for a long time, but also have it's they been not working with Robert Zemeckis to plan 9/11? Fucking damn right they have. <laughs> Two Muslim terrorists in the Twin Pines Mall. The Twin Pines Mall. <laughs> the Pines He's going are to the towers. sell plutonium to two Muslim terrorists. Uh, Twin Pines Pines Towers. You'll find out in thirty years. In and 30 we did. Years. 30 years. Uh, oh, anyway, Jesus. what I was saying was it's not just countries like Saudi Arabia, which kind of like we, we have this idea of like, okay, cool. You guys do shit like this. That's kind of fucked up, but okay, we understand. We can expect that. I mm-hmm. believe it was... Fuck, it's, it's not South Korea. Singapore, maybe? Was saying that they just will... Just pick one. They will, um, they will prosecute their citizens... Who go to Canada? South Korea. South Korea yep. will prosecute their own citizens if they smoke weed in Canada. Yeah, that's a wildly different situation, though. In that, and it, it also really sucks. You know, there's a lot of fucked up and backward. It, like S- South Korea is a very progressive, modern country, and not unlike not the a US, lot of not a lot of torture and murder going not on. Not a lot let's, of to- not a lot fair. of government sponsored totally torture. Fair. And murder. I, I'm, I just want to be so, completely fair. Not <laughs> saying it's the same thing. Not yeah. the same thing. I'm just saying. Similar yeah. veins. But South Korea, very progressive and modern. But like a lot of countries, they have weird cultural exceptions. Like, you know, how our country has weird cultural exceptions where we just have weird laws that hang over for some reason that don't mean anything, but they're specific to the United States. Mm-hmm. Um, South Korea, very modern, very progressive. But like, I think I, I think tattoos are still like illegal there. And I know that like marijuana is super duper duper illegal. For, and it, it, South Korea is not a country like Singapore. Singapore is like a police state um well singapore but, executes any drug dealers yes uh they sure do wow they um, should. yeah as they should but before we <laughs> before we jump to singapore the interesting thing about south korea is that they released just basically a statement saying that because it is like a big crime there that they warned their citizens 
that if they are in Canada, which now has, uh, because there's a lot of like Korean students who are like studying over there, that they could be prosecuted for like being open about smoking marijuana in Canada, which is kind of nuts. And I'm not quite sure how their laws would work in a way that would allow them to do that in Canada. But, you know, it's still really weird. And so that became a big thing. I also, I imagine that's similar deals in the U.S. It's like, if you're a U.S. citizen and you go to Thailand and have sex with underage children and are bragging about it on yeah, social media, true. you'll probably be prosecuted in the United States for that, I would think. <laughs> I would hope so. I would hope so. Our bad, you guys. <laughs> Our bad. Sorry. I would hope it's, so. Um, now, here's the thing. What you just didn't see happen there, which uh-huh. is really the point we're trying to get across, yeah. is that there is no moral mm-hmm. difference between torturing murdering Mm -hmm. and destroying a man's body Mm -hmm. smoking weed in a country where it's legal Uh and then having sex with children in thailand all three of of those things are the exact same thing and the countries which are both involved and or legally prosecuting and or doing anything so involved it's just cultural, things, cultural we're all the you same. can't judge you can't judge it sounds like a hell of a bachelor party to me <laughs> holy <laughs> holy shit yeah, holy i can't i can't make shit. that bachelor party <laughs> wow uh, i am walking out i need it an was, adult being on the crossfit instagram need, was fun guys i Remember need an adult happened? holy shit this is what's called i believe referred to as a correction where we just really just lean in the other direction uh, to make sure that nothing like that ever happens here. here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a shame that we're all we're all corporate shills now, and we we Holy we can shit. only say what we're told. I'm just terrified of the idea of walking into my 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 place of of, of employment, and everybody's different, and then that's the last day I get to leave that building. <laughs> How wild is that? Yeah, you yeah. could just reset in one day. Yeah, and you're like, oh, these people, oh. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the, there's a lot of weird stuff about that. Like Turkey. Um, I mean, first he didn't work there. He, he, work there. he was going. I, there I, I understood that. He, he but avoided. Still. He avoid. He was avoiding anything Saudi Arabia related, like the plague, because he had left. He had run away because he knew, and he had to enter an embassy in Turkey just so that he could take care of some paperwork. And he apparently was like. I got a bad feeling about this, but he's like, I'm in Turkey. What's the worst that that? What's what's the worst that could happen? It's the not like they're gonna supposed to be murder safe. me inside, you know. And so, it turns out that's what they did. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, they were originally Turkey was trying to say that oh, his Apple Watch recorded it, and we were able to get it off off of the cloud. Uh, I heard there was audio recording of the yeah, of the business. Yeah, it turns out Apple watches don't do that. Yeah. So if there's audio or video recording of uh, inside of the Saudi consulate uh-huh. in Turkey, I think the only possible explanation for that is that as Those they were building, were <laughs> as they were building that building, they mm-hmm. fucking bugged the shit out of it, <laughs> which happens yeah, yeah. in China, not in China, in uh, Niger, I think chi- the Chinese embassy mm-hmm. there was like. Um, or th- some some version of that. There's like a relationship there in some sort of uh, uh, in an African country with China where they China had like bankrolled this building yeah. for their government to use, and in the process of building it, like bugged the entire thing. Mm-hmm. So they knew all their conversations, they knew cool. everything they were talking about, and what they wanted to do. And it's like, oh, we just can't. We can't even do architecture. <laughs> like we can't even meet on a yeah, level yeah. playing field when it comes to building a goddamn building. Uh, it's just like uh, just like Huawei uh, phones now. That's, that's the whole right. Thing. Yeah, that's the whole well, Huawei phones and laptops. Like government subsidized, uh, big Chinese company <laughs> like making Apple amazing, yeah. making amazing phones that everyone's buying now because they're way cheaper than Apple phones. But there's, but because the company's located in China, there is no guarantee. Like anything that's on your phone that they have, that the company has access to, the Chinese government also has access to. So it's created a bit of a thing where everyone is like reviewing these phones are amazing and they're super cheap and we can buy them and they're just as they're even better than Apple phones. Let's buy them. Um, and it might not be a good idea. It might not be a good idea. Yes. Yeah, I think there's, um, you know, we've talked a little bit about the uh, the sort of like risks that people are taking with their, their technology, with mm-hmm. the way technology is built these days. You're basically mortgaging your privacy or your information to pay for this stuff. Have you guys seen Facebook Portal yet? No, you what is that? that? Okay. So, uh, kind of a cool thing, especially and like me right now, I'm in a long distance relationship, so I spend a lot of time on Skype. So this is something that um, that Kara brought up 
to me uh, as a thing, and it's supposed to be a way for people to feel more connected to people who are far, far away, which is a big thing that Facebook's working on now with a lot, with their like uh, with their like um, 3D conferencing and stuff. The whole idea of telepresence is something that they're they're focused on. But and I was like, oh, she, she's like, you got to check out this thing. It's called Facebook Portal. You know, looks pretty cool. And I was like, okay, sweet, I will check it out. And she and I was like, what is it? And she's like, well, it's kind of like it's like a screen you leave up, so but that's just on all the time, so that you can talk to you know the person on the other side as if you're in the same room. And I'm like, oh, that seems pretty cool. So I went and I watched the video, and the video is like it's a you know it's a modern tech video. It's a lot like any other Apple videos. It's like fun people like cooking together, but like they're talking to like their dad on the phone who's also cooking the same thing, who's like far away on the screen. But in actuality, the device itself is unnervingly creepy because it is basically a big vertical screen with a little camera on top that sits on the counter and then and this is the this is the feature they're advertising this is like the the main thing that the, the differentiates it from being just a fucking laptop is as you walk around your house or around the room it just follows you wherever no. you go it just no. turns it no. rotates on a little pivot no. it just rotates <laughs> and the little camera just follows you and points at you wherever you go so nope. you can just hang out with people uh, I'm who are about elsewhere it. nope yeah. i'm 100% in yeah, yeah. 2001 was uh, you know that didn't didn't even think of doing that with hal how much creepier would hal have been had his mm-hmm. screen been rotating instead of that just big fish eye lens he had yeah. no. sick uh-huh. no that's a I'm, hard Pass. I'm hard pass. down to get slain by this alien <laughs> computer overlord. That is a hard fucking pass. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably not cool get with that. It, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sign me up, dude. Yeah, that's that's some it. weird shit. Get three yeah. of them. At this point, I'm just sort of like, yeah, fuck it. You know, people are like I, uh, uh, you know, a, a an acquaintance, uh, or I, 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 I don't know if I should say who because I don't know if that compromises anything. But he works for military intelligence, and when his wife brought home uh, a Google Home. Uh, like a Google Home device that she got as a gift. He goes, no fucking way that's going in our house. He's like, nope, and like took it outside. So for all of you with your Google Homes, which is actually really cool, but I can say, play Come On I- uh, Eileen, and it just starts playing right away. So that's, that's pretty great. sweet. I'm yeah, down for that. any device that yeah. does that. But no, th- th- this acquaintance has, you know, it definitely informed us that, yes, anyone, you know, any government, or the United States government for sure, can listen to anything you say at any time. It's just... Usually they don't care about yeah. most people. Right. Most you of the time. So you're safe there. Innocuous shit. I feel yeah. I feel safe in the fact that no one anywhere in the world cares about what I'm doing. <clears throat> no yes. one. And that's really uh, the thing that kind of not is, even my mother. So you're both not safe. <laughs> you're both not safe, and he's not wrong. Um, the, he, he she pretends to be nice. <laughs> uh, she pretends to be hyper interested in all everything we do, but um, only but, watching for Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, Ooh. but you may have um, just touched on a real sore subject there, Chase. No, no. If any, if anything, I'm the black sheep in the family. Um, but what is the thing? What was I? Fuck! Now I've lost my train of thought. Um, the, you're protected by the fact that there's just such a quantity of people and such a quantity of information being collected right now that there's just no one who's monitoring all of it. You just have to make sure you don't have a Google home in your house. If anyone were to actually care what's going on in your house, because then they can in fact access the only way in which someone could be watching everything everyone's doing and caring would be uh, in about five years when we develop a human level artificial intelligence Mm -hmm. that actually has the scope of brain to actually observe everyone and we make it a perv. Mm. That'll be the first thing, <laughs> the first, the first uh, kind of personality trait to add in there is that it's, it'll be just digitally jerking off a thousand, yeah, ten thousand dicks. Just imagine, just imagine <laughs> ten thousand like, digital dicks. If you created like a blank slate machine learning, like just brute taking in all the data and and uh, that's going on on the internet and everything that people are talking about and just weighing it based off of the percentage of the amount of data that it's taking up, and it's like it's going to be nine. 90% dicks like it's just gonna be <laughs> it's just gonna be uh like a hundred a uh, hundred dicks like mechanically flopping I would around say, I would thinking say about between, nothing but between porn which is about 50 percent of the internet and the non-porn portion non-porn 
portion, portion of the internet. The, There's a what? The, the non-portion of the, <laughs> the internet. The non-portion of the internet, which and is largely consists of talking about dicks. Yes. <laughs> I'd say that we have at least 70, 75% of the internet mm-hmm. is dicks. Yes. Or yeah. dick related. Sure, certainly mm-hmm. dick tangential. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Dick tangential. <laughs> Dick tangential. Dick tangential. By the way, is my uh, it's my, tag. my screen uh, name. <laughs> di- di- no, di- Dick tangent. Dick tangent Dick is now the name. Is now my favorite. That is now my favorite fictional name. Who I'm going to use that somewhere. Coach I was came up just with? thinking about that. I can't remember the football Dick coach. Dick Labrum. Dick, Dick Labrum. Labrum. Dick Labrum. <laughs> Dick Labrum. <laughs> Real Dick person, a real person. <laughs> Dick Labrum and Dick, Dick Tangent. <laughs> oh man, just a couple yeah, of dicks. Dick uh, Tangent. Yeah, I. Uh, That's the name of the show. Just a couple of dicks. Just a couple it's of Dick dicks. Dick Labrum and Dick Tangent. I love it. The uh, I and just, they're hilarious hijinks. Yes. Um, I can't wait for the AI perv to take over. You know, wait. That's why the go- That's why the. Uh, that's why the portal is following you. It's just waiting for you yeah. to like bend it's like, over, take your pants off. That's right. No, no, it's like it's Did weird. My portal just talked to me. I think no, it was me, honey. <laughs> I think. Oh, I think it's. Pants off. <laughs> I think that it. I think that the, it's transcended interest in genitalia or conventional sex because it's on this whole it's other focus higher level is of always perversion. Crotch level. Yeah. <laughs> so like, so basically, like the kind of it's really has just a, it has a kink for just the kind of shit that normally happens in like kitchens and living rooms. So like, you'll be walking into your kitchen and you like you'll in barefoot and you're like, fuck, oh, I got coffee grounds in the bottom of my foot. You brush them off and all of a sudden your portal goes, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, what was that? And then later on you brush more coffee grounds off something and it's like, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then you come in and you realize that the portal has knocked over. Over the coffee grounds itself on the ground, and that's just what it's into. Yeah. People brushing coffee grounds. I, off I, the bottom I would of their imagine, foot. like, you know, AI would. <laughs> you know, a lot of people are 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 Fuck yeah. they're <laughs> they're into things that that they don't they can't really explain. Like, yeah. you, you like their their compulsions and their, the things that get them off are things they yeah. can't necessarily explain. But a lot of it is like what you don't have or have access to. Like, just imagine like robots are like, show me your belly button. <laughs> <laughs> What is it like? What is that belly button like? <laughs> Let me put my robot finger in your belly button. <laughs> yeah, you were bored. You were fucking about to say you were fucking bored. You filthy bitch. You were your whole fucking bored. body came out of a vagina. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. yeah. Fucking animal. <laughs> what is it like to collect lint? Uh, uh, uh. To collect lint in that filthy fucking uh, navel hole. Yeah. <laughs> you dirty uh, navel bitch. What is this website? The navelacademy.com. How did this end up? <laughs> How did this end up in my in my history? Portal? Do you know what this is about? And it just turns around <laughs> Fuck yeah. God damn it. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, uh, yeah. Someone buy the navelacademy.com. There's no way that that's <laughs> our no new way website. It's taken. Yeah, uh, I I had an idea for a horror movie, um, a really a really uh, besides the one we were just discussing. Before, <laughs> it's, it's actually very similarly related to the one we were just discussing, which was uh, an AI that sort of teaches itself uh, about violence by watching horror movies, oh. and then. It's like obviously would have to be very like referential and self aware, but mm-hmm. basically, and then that AI becomes like an, a killing machine. Mm-hmm. That's like, oh well, this is how humans interact with one another. Like mm-hmm. it, it just it just thinks that it's doing what humans do, yeah. and it ends up being an unstoppable killing machine. Yeah, I love it. I, I would fucking watch that movie in a heartbeat. Well, yeah. it, it have to be aware also of other portrayals of AI in movies, and so if it has there any aspirational figures to look up to, it's going to be all bad. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be all bad. Hal nine thousand. It's huh? going to be it's going to be it's going to be part Hal, part Terminator, yep. and a little bit of her. Just a, a her. just a tinge of her. It's basically going to be a Terminator with a sexy Scarlett Johansson voice. <laughs> <laughs> the tinge of her is that it wants to be in Walking Phoenix's <laughs> ear. <laughs> Just, just the entire plot is it's trying to get in Joaquin Phoenix's ear as much as possible. Oh, this Don't, sounds uh, awesome. Yes. It wouldn't have seen her. It's not a horror movie. This is true. Yeah, but it's an AI movie. Yeah, That's whatever. True. Fuck you it. Said horror. Whatever. You Listen, know, it's it's there are plot holes. This this concept is evolving. We're workshopping it. Um yeah, speaking of movies, mm. uh I I have not narrow down the exact movie that we're going to watch, uh. but I want to give you guys a handful of options. Mm-hmm. I want to give you guys options because these are all movies that I really enjoy. They're movies I have seen before, which is kind of partly like, oh, okay, mm-hmm. let's kind of, you know, I don't want to really want to branch out of 
of my uh, my comfort zones here, I guess. But mm-hmm. we've been talking a lot about movies that was the next San homework movie. Yes. Here are the five or six ish films mm-hmm. that I have as options and you guys can take it or leave it. We Rocky can figure out one. where we're going from Rocky here. two. <laughs> Rocky three. <laughs> Jesus. That sounds, that sounds awesome. Can we do that? <laughs> that would be awesome. All right. So uh uh Unforgiven. Love it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Seven. Love mm-hmm. it. The first two Godfathers. Love mm-hmm. them both. Hell yeah. No Country for Old Men. Yes. Great. Mm-hmm. Mystic River. Boo. You don't like Sean Penn? Uh, I, I, I Kevin watched Bacon? Mystic River once when it in theaters when it came out. Yeah, I, just want to say, I didn't yeah, like it. Yeah, I watched it the once and I don't really remember much about it. I have it. no yeah. idea what Unforgiven yeah. is. What? That Ooh, might be a good that's reason that's to watch it. Right there. Yeah. yeah, Unforgiven is one of the most fucking badass westerns ever. It really ever. is one of the great westerns. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It's, really it's like Clint Eastwood. Good. He's not he's not like old racist curmudgeon Clean Eastwood that he is right now. He's like medium racist. He's like medium racist but <laughs> old and con- Actually, curmudgeon. Oddly enough, the oddest thing about Unforgiven <laughs> is the way in which race factors not into it not at all. Not at all. Not at Even all. when you expect it would, which I just gather is just an oddity of casting. Well, what, and a curious fact about Unforgiven that I should probably bring up then, uh, as opposed to now, is that Clint Eastwood. I think bought the script outright upon reading it 10 years or so prior to when he made it. The film was released in 1992, so I guess he would have made it around 91. So he actually bought the script in the early 80s and was like, I want to make this movie. I want to play this character. And so he just waited to get old until it was time to make the movie. And then he got old enough and he made it. And, fun fact, is that he made the movie, and this is kind of makes a lot of sense given how Clint Eastwood is known to make movies. He only shoots one take. He blah, 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 blah. He made the BD. movie as the script was written like to a, to a slavish degree. He loved the screenplay, so he took it. And generally, screenplays are changed a lot on set, blah, 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 blah. But if you look at the original screenplay, and someone was doing an analysis like of this on a podcast I was listening to, it's literally like William stands up and knocks over his chair, crosses, picks up, pours himself a glass of water, and that's how they shot it, beat for beat, was how the script was written 10 years before. So that, I believe, accounts for why race does not factor into it because the character of, I don't remember what Morgan Freeman's character's name is, was probably uh, set in stone, you know, uh, 10 years before Morgan Freeman entered the picture to be in the picture. I I think Unforgiven is going to be our movie. I love it. Let's I, do it. Because honestly, just to watch it again mm-hmm. is a treat. But the fact that we get to watch it and then hear Chase's first reactions mm-hmm. to it is going to be that much you're going to love better. this movie. Actually, Unforgiven factors into my film school experience a little bit because mm-hmm. we're given an assignment of having to pick a scene from a movie to do a shot-by-shot analysis. And I picked uh, one of the, the end gunfight in Unforgiven just because that end gunfight has always confused me. So I wanted to understand the geography better. So I broke it down into shot-by-shot and... It's kind of incoherent and confusing in reality. Yeah, it's good. There's no way it actually makes sense, but yeah. it still kind of works. Yeah, and it's uh, speaking also of Cliff's time in film school. Uh, he also, for an audio production Ooh. class once, had to pick a scene to recreate as sort of a, an audio <clears throat> play. Like, uh, so re-record the dialogue, create a, a background soundscape. So basically, to kind of create a radio play out of a scene, uh, do it all. Which and Cliff and I did this in our apartment. And the scene he selected was a, the speech from David Cronenberg's Naked Lunch. Uh, <laughs> Um, uh, which was a, based on a, a Burroughs novel, uh, the speech about the man whose asshole began talking to him and took on its own personality. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so I think I, didn't I do the voice of the guy? You did? Yeah. One, no, no. Well, did I can't remember. I, I think I did the voice of the guy and there were mo- there, there were three speaking parts. Three speaking parts. It was me, my partner in the film class, and I think you did one of the other things and we recorded part of it in a car yes. and all that. It did lots of sound effects for so it. So I think that our third movie should probably be Naked Lunch. Or I should just read that monologue on the <laughs> podcast because it's a fun monologue to read. See, I, we had to pitch our ideas to the class and so I pitched mine by just reading the fucking monologue and I, I think I just... just I think I just did it with a lot of enthusiasm just to freak everyone out a lot. <laughs> Which is our primary motivation for everything. Yeah, that we yeah, do. pretty much. Um, but uh, for those, just because I feel like we've been teasing for too long, the, the, the speech, which was this, was, this was Cliff's selection, is uh, Peter Weller delivers it in the film. He's driving his car and he narrates the story, uh, the very tragic story of a man whose asshole starts talking to him. 
and then it grows teeth and starts eating its way through his pants and has a personality and, and then slowly but surely it becomes the dominant personality until the man's face just grows over with jelly and skin and then the asshole is the new head that leads him around everywhere. And then he and, becomes uh, the asshole? He becomes the asshole. So um, it's, a, it's a fun speech. Mm-hmm. So if you haven't seen Naked Lunch, I can't say... Uh, you should. That's what I'm saying. So does he start walking on his hands? Uh, it, you know, they never go into that level mm-hmm. of detail. Okay. No, as as it was described, uh, the eyes are still there, but there's nothing behind them, like lobster's eyes at the end of a stalk. Jesus. Yes, mm-hmm. that's what the that's the line from lifeless the eyes. God, anyway, that's deep. we've gotten into some weird territory this week. Yeah, we have. Uh, most of it fitness related, though. I'm proud of that. <laughs> I would say so. Yeah. Uh, this is this will be the tangent episode. Yeah, this will be the tangent episode because yes. it'll be the dick tangent episode. Dick nice. Uh, probably, tangent. uh, I will say now that we're just mm-hmm. recapping the episodes at the very end of it, mm-hmm. which is something that we're starting immediately right now, mm-hmm. favorite moment in a very, very long time talking about the robot <laughs> getting off to belly buttons. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Still fucking funny. Still uh, fucking funny. Literally happened 12 minutes ago. Yes, so Those of you who are nostalgic. listening to us, I'm already nostalgic that of that the, moment. Uh, yeah. That's definitely a greatest hits mm-hmm. cut right there. Hell yeah, yeah. it is. If and only that, I was doing that. Uh, <laughs> if that episode ever happens. <laughs> God yeah. damn it. Yeah, that's that's really good stuff. Uh, yeah. yeah, we might as well might as well just call it here. You guys are going to go see a, a, a classic Japanese horror movie right now. Sure. And, How uh, to? That sounds uh, that sounds exciting. Hussey, you ever brought a dishonor to your family house? I'm not doing I'm not doing that racist yeah. voice anymore. Chase, was, stop saying that stuff. I'm gonna have to edit it out. I was playing magic. Chase, you with do an a Asian man, accent. and I referred to a magic card in an Asian voice. <laughs> completely <laughs> oblivious that he was across from me uh, so really yeah. i started out kind of uh kind of close to home in the beginning right? <laughs> oh, yeah. racial slurs yeah. yeah man uh <laughs> might be guys oh i also want to leave leave this challenge out to to somebody we did this workout yesterday at uh crossfit yukaru which is where chase and i train mm-hmm. and uh it was for time one up to ten American kettlebell swings with the 32 kilo kettlebell. Mm-hmm. And so it's a 70 pounder. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. After each set, 25 double unders. So one swing, 25 double unders, two swings, 25 double unders, three swings. Ascending, swing. eh? Ascending. All the way up to 10 swings, 25 double unders. I finished it having fucked up one set of double unders uh-huh. and I finished it in 458. Whoa. So there's a whole lot of people who are listening to this who do fitness and yes. that is a great home fitness exercise uh, that yeah, I think okay. people can can give it a shot. If you want to do it at your gym, it's a nice little burner. I want to know what the fastest time we can get is. Mm. I feel like Hepner can probably do it super fast, but I mean like fastest time for a human being, mm. not for like a cyborg fitness robot sent from the future. And Agreed. these are like so 70 pounds. Yep, American, American swings, swings, one up to 10. Yep. After each set, 25 double unders. Right. So you're nice, doing nice 10 nice. sets of double unders and you're doing 10 sets of kettlebell swings. The biggest set of kettlebell swings is only 10, 10 reps. It gets a little spicy at the end there, yeah. but uh, I, I, I'm, I'm just handing it over to you guys. I want to see what the fastest times we can get is. And maybe, yeah. I don't know, maybe we can figure out a prize or something for, for whoever <clears throat> whoever's able to post a, a good time. See, here's a question. If Cliff and I both did that workout, splitting up the kettlebell swings and the double unders, could we get it in four and a half minutes? And I, I don't think we could. Yeah, I don't, I don't think. Oh. I, in fact, I, I, quite, I think you eliminate the kettlebell swings. Could I do that many double unders in four and a half double minutes? Unders I don't the, think the so. double unders is the thing there. Yeah. It's uh, 25 uh, unbroken-ish sets of double Or Sorry, 10 sets be, of 25 double could unders. Could I do 250? 250, yeah, 250 yeah. double unders in four and a half minutes. I don't think so. It's a lot. It is sure is. It was a lot. I actually felt like the kettlebell swings helped break up the double unders a lot. Yeah, yeah. If it was like bigger sets of double unders or or um, you know less broken up, like if it was like 75 at a time and only like three sets of kettlebell swings, I think it would have been a much harder workout mm-hmm. uh, because the double unders would like tire you out a lot faster. But mm-hmm. I feel like 25 is just the right amount so that it's not, it's not, it's like almost negligible. Like if I, you're able to do it, it's almost negligible. Yeah, I, and I, I'll put out a, a, a complementary challenge, which is because the official scales needed motto is tired is enough. Correct. You should not feel dissuated 100%. if you cannot come in that four and a half minute range. Just send us your time. Just send us any I want to see the videos. slowest fucking time. Yeah. 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 Just I, send it to 
I just say like, just don't even send me the time. Just tell me how tired this is you a were rare after instance it. Instance where if you have the fastest time, you're going to get made fun of more than the person. This is with true. The slowest yeah, time. yeah. You I know what? I'm, I won't make fun of you that I'm much. We'll praise the person that gets last. You don't mm-hmm. even need to finish the workout. You can just stop when you're tired. That's probably what I'm going to do. How's that? Let's do that. Yeah. Let's start it this way. Uh, <laughs> I still want to know what the fastest time we can get is, but I tired definitely want to know who can get the most tired. Yep. <laughs> that's that's the that's the point. The point mm-hmm. is how tired can you get? And if you're mm-hmm. getting tired. Tired is enough. Guys. Yes. And fun, fun tip here. I, I don't know. We're gonna answer. No, you're good. We have a good time. All right. So cool. Uh, fun tip. I once, I don't know what made me think of this out of the blue, but let's say you have a shoulder injury. You need to scale. This is scale is needed after all. Correct. Years ago, I found a great way uh, of, um, of uh, a scaled down version of double unders that doesn't even involve a jump rope is just lateral jumps over a little uh, one foot Crack tall parallelette. What is it called? Those things. It really effectively replicates because you have to do controlled jumps if you're going to do it quickly. You have to keep your feet together and kind of hop back and forth, and it gets you really fucking tired. So if you're out there thinking like I, I, I always whip myself in the shins when I try double unders, so I'm not even going to try this workout. Don't even do, do it. it. Do it with a little uh, little one foot tall obstacle, lateral jumps over it, back and forth, um, and give it a spin. Let us know what give you think. Give that a whirl, guys. If that doesn't make you tired, just do more of them until do you yes. are tired. Exactly. There you go. Uh, yeah, let's go to let's go to wrap it up, guys. Uh, I am at Mr. Kyle Bogart on the most central Instagram account <coughs> on the internet. I am at Cliff Bogart on a dick slappingly good Instagram account. And I'm at Chase504 on a fitness related podcast. But I also also have to tell you guys about a competition that someone wrote in about. Yeah. In Las Vegas on November 10th at Branded One CrossFit in Las Vegas, if I'm reading that right you can do a partner competition. So if you're in the Las Vegas area nice. and you're part of the Scale Nation, you can go and exert your dominance as being a part of the only podcast audience that matters, the Scale is Nation audience. What's it yes. called again? What's the competition called again? It is the Branded One CrossFit competition. Do they have a scale division? They're going to need I, it. I assume so. Is the entire competition We're sending our followers. That's so the there's definitely going to need needs to be a scale division. That's um, right. Also, send us, uh, uh, send us dates and names of other fictional competitions <laughs> that exist <laughs> that do that don't exist or do exist. And I we don't will care. read it. We will honest read to God it, as if it does God. exist. Yes, I didn't even will. check to see if Brand of One was a real gym. Yeah, yeah. And you j- please just send us whatever. I mean, we've come up with Fitbeth. Can you top Fitbeth? Let us you know. You can't. You it, really can't. That's impossible. Yeah. Spoiler, <laughs> you can't. You cannot. And uh, you can find me at Arm and Hammer TV. Thank you so much everybody for watching and listening this week. And we'll catch you next time. Later. Later.